Hello learners, welcome to environmental science in a second course of NIS. As we all know that in nature catastrophes such as floods, drought, earthquake, tsunami happen from time to time causing immense damage to life and property. It is important to devise means and methods to manage and minimize from nature disasters. As far as possible you shall learn about causes, effects, prevention and management of natural disaster. I am Nilam Gupta, course coordinator of environmental science. Welcome you in this program. We will discuss lesson number 12, disaster and air management part 1 of module 4, contemporary environmental issues. So objectives of this program are, explain how ecological balance is maintained in nature, classify disasters into natural and man-made, explain the causes, effects and management of flood, cyclone, drought, earthquake, tsunami, etc. First we will talk about natural resource. Natural resource is something found in nature that people can meet their needs. These natural resources can be renewable or non-renewable. As seen in the figure, renewable resources are those that are constantly available like water or can be reasonably replaced or recovered like plants and animals or also renewable as they reproduce offsprings to replace adult animals. Non-renewable resources are those that cannot easily be replaced once they are destroyed. Examples include fossil fuels. Minerals are also non-renewable because even though they form naturally in a process called the rock cycle, it can take thousands of years making it non-renewable. We exploited our natural resources as a, an exhaustive manner. So most of these are now at the age of depletion. Now come to the ecological balance. When natural resources are used, they are replenished naturally through biochemical cycles, food chains, food webs and an equilibrium in when is maintained in nature. This is called ecological balance. Now come to the disaster. Disaster is defined as a crisis situation causing widespread damage which far exceeds our ability to recover. It is a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or a society involving widespread human, material, economic or environmental losses and impact which exceed the ability of the affected community or society to cope using its own resources. Now come to the disaster management. It essentially deals with management of resources and information towards a disastrous event and is measured by how efficiently, effectively and seamlessly one coordinates these resources. Disaster management at the individual and organization level deal with the issues of planning, coordination, communication and risk assessment. Accordingly, this program will cover these subjects to enhance our ability for better disaster response. Some examples of major disaster in India such as Latur earthquake in Maharashtra, super cyclone in Odisha, earthquake in Gujarat, tsunami in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, Uttarakhand flash flood, Kashmir floods and Kerala floods. Now come to the types of disaster. Disaster can be of two types, natural uh, disaster and man-made disasters. Natural disaster include flood, drought, cyclone, earthquake, tsunami, cloud burst and fire, rail, road and air accidents include in the category of man-made disasters. Now we will take first natural disaster that is flood. So floods are caused by a variety of factors both natural and man-made. Some obvious causes of floods are strong winds, heavy rains, melting snow and dries, dam burst and frequent storms within a short time duration. The common practice of humans to build homes and towns near rivers and other water bodies like within natural foot flood plants has contributed to the disastrous consequences of flood. In fact, floods are, have historically killed more people than any other form of natural disaster. Floods generally develop over a period of days when there is too much rain water to fit into the river and water spreads over the land next to it that is flood plain. However, they can happen very quickly when lots of heavy rain falls over a short period of time. These flash floods occur with 
little or no warning and cause the biggest loss of human life than any other type of flooding. Now come to the effects of flood. Floods can have devastating consequences and can have effects on the economy, environment and people. During floods, roads, bridges, farms, houses and automobiles are destroyed. People become homeless. All these come at a heavy cost to people and the government. It usually takes years for affected community to be rebuilt and business to come back to normalcy. Water supply and electricity are disrupted and people struggle and suffer as a result. The environment also suffers when flood happens. Chemicals and other hazardous substances end up in the water and eventually contaminate the water bodies that floods end up in. In addition to this, flooding brings a lot of diseases and infection including military fever, pneumonic plague and dysentery. Sometimes insects and snakes make their ways to the area and cause a lot of homework. Now come to the management of flood. In India, systematic planning for flood management commenced with the five-year plans, particularly with the launching of the National Program of Flood Management in 1954. During last 65 years, different methods of flood protections in structure as well as non-structure have been adopted in different states depending on the nature of the problem and local conditions. Structural means include storage reservoirs, flood embankments, drainage channels, anti-erosion works, channel improvement work, detention basins, etc. Non-structural measures include flood forecasting, flood plain zoning, flood proofing and disaster preparedness. Sometimes it might not be possible to prevent a flood, even if we know that it's about to get flooded. However, there are certain actions that can be taken to reduce the impact significantly or to reduce the possibility of flooding. See the figure, that is flood control figure. Now come to the ways of flood control. The first step is to keep the drainage system clean. This allows water to be carried down very fast. Choke drains cause a significant reduction in the ability and speed of the water to be drained away. In most situations of urban flooding, this is the major cause The drains might get choked due to throwing of solid waste inside storm drains. Generally, cleanup of streets is also important as in rainwater falls down the street, it rushes into the storm drains. If the streets are not, not clean, the rainwater trying to get into the drain carries solid waste into the drain with itself, which then obstructs the flow of water by the drainage system. Next is rainwater harvesting. If there are several rainwater harvesting systems, the rainfall falling in that much area would try to go to the subsoil of the region locally rather than straining the drainage system. Lower is the amount of water trying to go through the drainage system, the easier it is for the drainage system to drain off the water. Next is this uh, desilting. The drains should be desilted before the onset of the rainy season. This prevents the drains from getting choked and it also increases the holding capacity of the drain as accumulated silt prevent that much more water from being accumulated in the drains. Inspection and repair of dam leaves, embankment, etc. Before rainy season, these structures should be thoroughly inspected for possible weak spots and these should be repaired. Next is afforestation. It helps in binding the loose soil. The most major impact of this is as flood water races through, it might take loose soil with it. This loose soil will now choke the drain as well as water harvesting system thus rendering both of these as infect ineffective. On the other hand, trees will prevent soil to flow with the water as the roots of the trees will act as binding force. Another major impact that afforestation provides is by reducing the impact of flowing water. This has impact on large scale flooding such as overflowing river as water charges forward its speed is reduced to some extent due to resistance offered by the trees. 
This can reduce the force of the changing water, thereby reducing structural damage due to weakening in the force with which water hits various structures. Local lowlands should have storm drain so that water does not get accumulated there. These drains should have some kind of mesh covering so that only water can flow in. Leaves and other solid debris should not go in these drains. Next is local embankments around low-lying houses etc. Let us say for some reason your house is at a level lower than its vicinity. This can happen when you have constructed a basement which is obviously lower than the road level or over a period of years the road level has risen due to repeated trade tearing etc. In such cases you should create a local embankment between the streets or road and your property so that water cannot flow down from the street or road inside your house. These embankments might be permanent in the form of concrete structure. Now come to the precautionary measures as seen in this slide. Do not touch any loose electric wire to avoid electrocution. Do not spread rumor or listen them. Make provision for adults and children who need special light. After the flooding flood is over, Get yourself and your family members inoculated against diseases and seek medical care for injured and sick. Clear the house and dwellings of debris. Report any loss to the revenue authorities. Now come to the drought. Drought is the, an event that results from lower than normal expected rainfall over a season or period. The low rainfall is insufficient to meet the needs of human beings, plants, animals and agriculture. These are few causes of droughts. First we will take scanty rainfall. Droughts can occur when there is the lack of expected precipitation. Some regions can go for months without any rain and that would be normal for them. Farmers plant in anticipation of rain and so when the rains do not come and irrigation infrastructure is absent, agricultural drought occurs. Next is deforestation. Cutting down trees or deforestation in the name of economics will expose surface water to more evaporation. It will also reduce the ability of the ground to hold water and make it easier for desertification to occur. It can set off drying conditions, especially for smaller water bodies. Cutting down trees known to reduce our forest watershed potential. Next is environmental degradation. Unusual warming or cooling of sea surface temperature can create a change in air temperature. This change of air temperature can affect the location of convention currents responsible for weather patterns. Shifting warmer air, previously cooler locations, heated air pools, moisture from the soil, allowing it from it to form cloud and return to the earth as rain when it enters the cooler upper atmosphere. If weather patterns shift enough to create an area with little rainfall over a period of time, there is not enough moisture in the soil to draw up into the air to create clouds. Once the weather pattern shifts back to its former location, Moisture continues to be removed from the soil on the daily basis and no rain clouds are able to form to replace the moisture. Now come to the effects of droughts. Droughts have severe effects on agriculture. To start with droughts affects mostly rain fed crops and subsequently the irrigated crops. The herdsmen, landless laborers, subsistence farmers, women, children and farm animals are more affects. Crop failure leading to large scale starvation and death, affected dairy activities, timber and fisheries, increased unemployment, depletion of groundwater, increasing energy consumption for pumping water from deep aquifer, reduces energy production in hydroelectric power plants, loss of biodiversity and reduced landscape quality, causes health problems, increased poverty, reduced quality of life and social unrest leading to migration. Now we will talk about management of drought. Water is precious and a scarce commodity. 
everywhere in the world and humans need to use water wisely as such even if there is water available it is important because the practice makes us cope better when there is a shortage also preserving water leaves enough to be stored in dams reservoirs and even turned into ponds we must learn to conserve water if even if there is no drought with the right attitude towards water we are better prepared to face the impact in case there is a shortage sometimes canals and pipelines are built to connect places with abundant water to places with less water projects like that can be very expensive but they ensure that during droughts there can be some water flow until traditional water supply sources improve now we will discuss next disaster that is earthquake we have often experienced the shake up earthquake so what is earthquake an earthquake is the result of a sudden release of energy in the earth crust that creates seismic waves a sudden rapid shaking of the earth caused by breaking and shifting of rocks beneath the earth surface now come to the measurement of earthquake there are number of ways to measure the magnitude of an earthquake the first widely used method that richter scale was developed by charles f richter in 1934 it is used a formula based in based on amplitude of the largest wave recorded on a specific type of seismometer and the distance between the earthquake and the seismometer on the richter scale magnitude is expressed in whole numbers and decimal fractions earthquakes with magnitude of above 2 or less are usually called micro earthquake they are not commonly felt by people and are generally recorded only on local seismographs events with magnitude of about 4.5 or greater there are several thousands of such shocks annually are strong enough to be recorded by sensitive seismographs all over the world greater earthquakes have magnitude of 8 or higher there is a table which shows intensity on richter scale and extent of damage up to 3 no damage if intensity is 3 to 5 cracks in old buildings if 5 to 7 cracks in roads above 8 collapsing of building the richter scale is not commonly used anymore as it has been replaced by another scale called the movement magnitude scale which is a more accurate measure of the earthquake size now causes of the earthquake earthquakes are usually caused when rock underground suddenly breaks along a fault this sudden release of energy cause the seismic wave that make the ground shake when two blocks of rock or two plates are rubbing against each other they stick a little they don't just slide smoothly the rocks catch on each other the rocks are still pushing against each other but not moving after a while the rock break because of all the pressure that's built up when the road rocks break the earthquake occurs during the earthquake and afterward the plates or blocks of rocks are started moving and they continue to move until they get stuck again the spot underground where the rock breaks is called the focus of the earthquake the place right above the focus is called the epicenter of the earthquake now come to the effects of earthquake collapsing building walls bridges falling furniture or objects shattering glass windows and mirrors is dangerous since the impact of large heavy objects can be fatal to human beings second is flood earthquake can cause dam walls to crack and eventually collapse sending raging bed waters into surrounding areas and causing severe flooding next is landslide during an earthquake large rocks and portion of earth high up in the hill can become dislodged and rapidly roll or slide down into the valley and kill people next is tsunami tsunami is a large sea wave or series of waves that can be generated by an earthquake liquefaction when sediments with a high water content are subjected to prolonged shaking the pressure of the water held in pores in the sediment gradually increases eventually the sediments lost all 
cohesive strength and begin to behave as if they are liquids. Buildings and other structures sink into the ground or overturn and bury tanks and other cavities rise in the surface. Now come to the management of earthquake. India's increasing population and extensive unscientific construction, mushrooming all over including multi-story luxury apartments, gangetic malls, supermarkets as well as warehouses and machinery buildings keep India at high risk. During the last 25 years, the in country has experienced 10 major earthquakes and that have resulted in over 20,000 deaths. As per the current seismic zone map of the country, over 59% of the India's land area is under threat of moderate to severe seismic hazards. That means it is prone to shaking. In fact, the entire hum Himalayan belt is considered prone to great earthquakes of magnitude exceeding 8. Now come to the management. Good building design, soil analysis for construction of houses, with certification, approval for of concerned municipals on earthquake resistant building and training of builders, architects, contractors, owners and government. Now come to the precautionary measures of earthquake. Move out to open, do not panic, keep away from lift, windows and furniture, stand under strong beams. If movement restricted, cover head in multi-story buildings, stay indoor, stop vehicle during travel, check for damage and clear blockage, apply first aid in injuries, stay away from buildings. Now come to the cyclone. Cyclone refers to any spinning storm that rotates around a low pressure center. The low pressure center is also referred to as the eye of the storm, which is well known for being eerily calm compared with the areas under the spinning arm of the storm. We could say that the eye is watching what's going on down below. So it needs a clear path, but the arms are where all the action happens because this is where the storm is throwing out all of its rain and wind. Cyclones tend to come about in the same way in all areas and revolve around the low pressure eye. Now come to the causes of cyclone. Warm air likes to rise and as it rises, it cools. Cool air cannot hold as much moisture as warm air so that water gets squeezed out of the condensing air and a cloud begins to form. If the water in the cloud builds up enough, it may fall back to the ground as rain and draw cool air down with its as a downdraft. When they work together, that warm updraft and cool downdraft creates a storm cell. As this process continues, the cloud grows and we eventually get a large thunderstorm cloud. This thunderstorm cloud is now ready to diversify into other storms like tropical cyclones and tornadoes, but this can't happen unless the air in the cloud starts spinning horizontally. If this occurs over the tropical ocean, this is called a tropical depression. This is like a baby tropical cyclone with wind speeds less than 39 miles per hour. If it starts spinning even faster and has wind speeds 40 to 73 miles per hour, we have a tropical storm. If the storm grows even larger over a tropical ocean and has wind speed above 74 miles per hour, we have our full grown hurricane, typhoon or cyclone, depending on where the storm is found. If the spinning occurs over land, mesocyclone occurs. If the mesocyclone gets spinning fast enough that the cloud starts reaching towards the ground like a long arm, that is the beginning of a tornado. If the cloud's arm reaches all the way to the ground and grab holds, this is now officially a type tornado ready to suck up everything in its path like a giant vacuum cleaner hose. Now come to the effects of cyclone. Wind and water to prevent a building envelope, uplift of roof system, flying debris penetrates windows, storm surge, heavy precipitation in a short time, flash flooding, landslide, 
Now come to the management of the cyclone. India is quite susceptible to cyclone and floods due to its geographical location surrounded by on three sides, West Bengal, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Gujarat come under more severely cyclone and flood affected areas of India. In each of these states, there is a need to identify the most severely flood affected districts and blocks so that contingency measures can be taken to accurate level. As no single approach will be to address the community's vulnerability to hazard, a multi prolonged, most effective approach is required to reduce the risk. Incorporating protection, accumulation, and retreat option to handle the cyclone risk. Once an overall strategy is identified, comprising protection, accommodation, retreat, or a combination thereof, specific measures are applied to handle the hazard. That is, long term measures. Construction of cyclone shelter, canal and embankment of improved drainage, missing road links, shelter bank plantation, institutional capacity building and hazard reduction studies, improvement of or offshore warning system, awareness generation for cyclone risk mitigation. Now come to the tsunami or seismic wave or tidal wave. A tsunami is a set of ocean wave caused by a large abrupt disturbance of the surface. This will often an earthquake generation magnitude which displaces enough water to form waves. Tsunami is also called seismic sea wave or tidal wave, catastrophic ocean wave usually caused by a submarine earthquake occurring less than 50 km beneath the sea floor with a magnitude greater than 6.5 on the Richter scale. Underwater or coastal landslides or volcanic eruption may also cause a tsunami. The term tidal wave is more frequently used for such a wave, but it is a misnomer for the wave has no connection with the tides. In a tsunami, a train of simple progressive oscillatory waves is propagated to great distance at a ocean surface in ever widening circles, much like the waves produced by a pebble falling into the shallow pool. The observation has enormous practical value, enabling seismologists to issue warnings to endangered coast immediately after an earthquake and several hours before the arrival of the tsunami. As the wave approaches the continental coast, friction with the increasing shallow bottom reduces the velocity of the wave. This results in increased wave height up to 50 meter and above, 3 to 5 major oscillation generate most of the damage. The effects of tsunami however vary widely from place to place. Now come to the effects of tsunamis. The effect of tsunami are quite similar to those of cyclone or floods. Those waves of sea water enters with great force and floods that land and washes away human settlements, agriculture crops and the pro other properties. The famous tsunami of December 2004 has had devastating effects in many countries, particularly in Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, India. One, uh, one large area of coastal district of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, more than 2 lakhs people died in 8 Asian countries including India. Now come to the management. The miti mitigation and management measures, the mitigation measures are quite similar to those uh, for cyclone or flood. So this is all about flood, earthquake, drought, cyclone and tsunami. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learnt. The Indian subcontinent is high prone to natural disaster. Floods, drought, cyclone and earthquakes are a recurrent phenomena in India. Floods are temporary inundation of large region as a result of increase in level of river or reservoir due to heavy rain. High winds, cyclone, tsunami, melting snow or dam burst. Floods can cause toll on life of people, livestock and materials, deforestation resulting in soil erosion, causing siltation in the, of the river and reservoirs can enhance the incident of floods. Drought is an event which results from lower rainfall than expected over a seasonal period. The rainfall is insufficient to meet the need of human beings, plants animals and agriculture. 
the most important effect of drought is on agriculture. Earthquake is a sudden release of energy accumulated in deformed rocks of earth crust. A cyclone is a large scale air mass that rotates around a strong center of low atmospheric pressure. A tsunami is a set of ocean waves caused by a large abrupt disturbance of the surface. This will often end earthquake gen generation magnitude which displaces enough water to form waves. So, dear learners, this is all about lesson 12, disasters and their management part 1. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.